Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 387 and in episode 386 we talked about a client questionnaire for family and portrait photography and in this episode we're talking about what you might want to ask your clients or put on a form that you send to your wedding clients prior to their wedding date. So years ago I had a developer put together a custom site for me so that I could gather this information but it is so easy now to get something like Jot Forms or Gravity Forms or some type of WordPress plugin or whatever you're using in order to get this information from your clients and I think it's really important to gather it quickly and efficiently and of course digitally is the best way to get in touch with clients or get that information but I want to just give you the fields that I had on my form and what you might want to collect so have it in front of me on my laptop of course on this form I have bride's name groom's name wedding date and coverage time now my contract states eight hours so we can I can work with them on the wedding day timeline but I like to have the beginning time and the ending time on their form so everybody's on the same page I have address location for pre-ceremony photographs because a lot of times I am photographing the bride getting ready maybe at her home or at her parents home. I have address after the wedding and then in parentheses I say so that we can send you your wedding photos. So that's pretty important because couples might be moving during this time or there might be a transition phase. I need to know where I can send everything. And then I have fields for the entire bridal party. So I want to know who the maid of honor, or matron of honor is. I want to know the best man and I want to know all the bridesmaids and all the groomsmen and I want to know the relationship to the couple. So I have this like field, this like code at the bottom that says, you know, groom's friend, bride's friend, bride's sister, groom's sister, bride's brother, etc. So they can put these little codes in and I know everyone who is in the wedding party. This also prepares me <laughs> if I get one of those giant wedding parties that you're like whoa I have a lot of people I'm gonna have to manage it's just good to know then I have the parents listed and grandparents any grandparents in attendance and then right underneath of that I have a field that says are there any sensitive family issues I need to be aware of so of course I'm refer referring to divorce or are there steps or how does that look and by the way prior to the wedding I'll send this to the bride um, about four to six weeks prior and then I will schedule a phone call a week or two prior to the wedding in order to go over it and I will ask them these things and I'll get a feel for like for instance if the bride's parents are divorced does the bride want a photograph with her mom and dad in the same photo? And if she does, that is fine. I will absolutely take that. How do her parents feel about that? And I will tell them all the time, because sometimes they'll say, Heather, you know what? I would love that photo, but I just don't think they're going to cooperate. And I'll say, mm, nope leave that up to me I'll handle it I will play completely dumb like I don't even know I will just grab the mom put her in take a photo and then grab the dad put him in and take a photo and get the bride what she wants but having that intelligence beforehand is really really helpful then I have ceremony address name of church or location the time the duration are they having a receiving line then I have the reception address cocktail hour time are you planning on attending the cocktail hour? What time are you planning on being announced? These are all really important for me so I know what my deadlines are. And then I have colors and then I have all the vendors like I like them to list the makeup artist, videographer, bakery, entertainment, honeymoon. I have the name and the website so that I can include that on my blog post but also I will periodically reach out to these vendors both prior to and after the wedding in order to share photos after but prior to to introduce myself if I haven't worked with them previously and then I have an open field that says any other information you'd like to provide now this I don't I, I'm not naive enough to think that this covers everything there are certainly more questions that you could ask but this gives us a good basis for our discussion on the phone prior to the wedding. We can go through everything and I can help them plan their timeline. So two questions I was asked recently was number one, what do I ask clients? And number two, how do I help them with the timeline? And this is a great way to do that because if they are telling me, for instance, that they have a 5 p.m. ceremony and the reception, the cocktail hour is six to seven and the reception starts at seven, then I'm starting to get a little bit worried about how much time we have for the photographs and maybe that's when I say hey are you interested in a first look or if they say 
you know, I love all of your beautiful outdoor photos and our wedding at, is at 5.30 p.m. on November 7th. <laughs> I say, well, it's gonna be dark at 5.30 p.m., so have you considered our first look or are you okay with darker photographs? And I show them examples so they can see what that looks like. So that helps to, you know, get all the, the potential issues out of the way. We can discuss everything so that we're on the same page. I know what they're looking for. And it's really important to have all of this communication with your client. It is their wedding day, the most important day of their lives. I will do anything to help it run more smoothly. And if I notice a discrepancy, like in the time frame, um, like I just mentioned with the light, or even if it's earlier, you know, I'll say, okay, there's something you might want to consider here that might take longer than you think. In fact, everything takes longer than you will think. I had a bride one time that had one hour for photographs after the formals were done and before she needed to be at the reception, one hour, which is a lot of time, I'm fine with that, but she had 10 locations. And I said to her, if we go to 10 locations, you'll get one or two photos from each location and they're just going to be okay. I would rather you take me to one mediocre location or one awesome location and we spend our entire time there because getting in and out of the car takes everyone longer than they think and you're not factoring that in so if you have a 10 person 12 person bridal party which by the way is not uncommon and not that big and you have to get all of those people in the limo and then out of the limo and then arrange to get photos it's going to take time more than you think because they're slow so i would rather you pick one location in the end i think this was years ago i think that bride did pick one or maybe two locations and that was so much better she had and I told her you will have more photographs from one location at an hour than you will from 10 awesome locations at five minutes a piece so I think that's my professional responsibility to do that and I think it's yours as well but you know a lot of experience tells me that I need to ask these types of questions so if you have anything that you'd like to add if you're a wedding photographer and you've been doing this, please comment below. It helps other photographers who are getting into weddings. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.